Hey everybody, what's good? It's your girl, Evil Gonna Barbie. You know what it is and you know what I do. We're inside of my trailer. It's a little stuffy. I'm a little stuffy. It's super warm in here. Look, I ain't even got on no pants. <laughs> I'm getting ready to roll a fatty. And uh, we're going to finish the, the story of Dr. Barda today. We're going to finish that story because... Uh, Yes, I do have severe ADHD. We all know that. <laughs> but this is a story worth continuing and worth telling. So, we're not going to talk about Crazy Dick today. You know he's already fucking called. I'll tell you about that story. He's already called and prof apologized profusely. And said he realizes that he cannot take his prescription meds like that. <laughs> that he, he can't control it because he can't control himself. He's a fucking addict. He realizes that. And so he begged my apology. First he tried to put it on everybody else. And I said, no, <laughs> this is reality. This is what you did. This is what you're doing. Stop it. So now he, he stopped. He's back because he wants me back. He wants me to be around him. And he knows I don't fuck around with no fucking drugs. Take that shit some fucking someplace else. I don't care if it's your fucking prescription. I don't care if your fucking doc doctor gave it to you. You sit there and fucking do it all in two days. A 30 day supply in two days. <laughs> How the fuck is that helping you? Crazy ass motherfucker. So he realizes he can't control himself. He knows it. <coughs> and he needs me to fucking go with him. He's like, why? Well, usually you're there to go with me. Because I take the bottle. I take the bottle right out of his fucking hands. Okay, right out of his fucking hands at the pharmacy. And I fucking control that shit because he can't control it. See? I don't leave his ass to his own devices. Oh, Jesus. And this is why we need people like Dr. Barda. Let's get back to the, to the start of the story, Dr. Barda. So, now I'm with Dr. Barda. I go and see her once a week. <laughs> She's got me on a once a week schedule. I go and I sit her see her and talk to her <clears throat> now she's got me on started me off with fucking Paxil which at the time was some really fucking crazy shit this is like well we're going back like to when Connor was little so this is like 15 years 15 years ago when they first came out with Paxil and what was happening with Paxil was that it was used to treat depression. It was used to treat um, s severe depression. And um, it was an antipsychotic. It had some antipsychotic properties to it. But what was happening with the fucking Paxil, I don't know if you guys remember this, you can Google this. What was happening with Paxil was that motherfuckers were taking Paxil and going to sleep and then waking up and killing their wives in the middle of the fucking night, right? Waking up and fucking killing everybody in the fucking house off the fucking Paxil, right? So they fucking stopped the Paxil. They stopped the Paxil because that shit was making people even more fucking crazy. Now, it could have just been motherfuckers using that as an excuse as, you know, really wanted to kill their wives any motherfucking way. So that just happened to be a convenient excuse. I was fucking high on Paxil and I fucking killed her in my sleep. I didn't even realize it. You know, that could be some bullshit too. But first you put me on some Paxil. That didn't work. Felt like the worst acid trip I ever had. And then she put me on an antipsychotic medication. And I can't remember the name because I've been on everything. I've been on Ativan, Clonazepam, Lorazepam. Like, fucking everything. You know, I had this one doctor. If I could, that motherfucker would have had... If he could, he would have had me walking around doing the goddamn Thorazine Shuffle. Okay, my ass would have been fucking doing the Thorazine Shuffle. Because he just thought I was just right out of my fucking man. I, right out of my tree. <laughs> he thought I was right out of my tree. I had to get way to his ass because he was giving me way too much fucking medication. And then everything you take... Makes you gain 60 fucking pounds. It makes you gain 60, 80 pounds. So, here I am, a person who likes to stay physically fit and likes to have a badass bang and body. All of a sudden, I weigh 180 pounds, which gives me, you know, a bad body image, which makes me depressed. <laughs> okay, so it's a slippery slope trying to find the right medication. So now that Dr. Barnes got me on the right medication because she's a fucking genius. And all of a sudden it was like, ah, the sun was shining again and I could talk again and I didn't weigh fucking 160 pounds anymore. And I could focus on a task. So my husband went out and bought me a sewing machine. <laughs> okay. My husband went out and bought me a fucking sewing machine. The best sewing, sewing machine buddy can buy. 
And that became my new addiction, sewing and making beautiful hippie fairy dresses. And that was my new addiction, and that's what kept me focused on. While my beautiful son was outside playing in the neighborhood with all the other little rich white kids, and my husband was sitting in the living room, chain smoking cigarettes, smoking with cigarettes and watching golf, I was sitting in my living room, motherfucking sewing dresses. Like, it was the end of days. It was the end of days was coming, and everybody needed a motherfucking dress. <laughs> yeah, and I was the only person in the world that could make the dresses for the end of days. I sat my ass in that fucking kitchen. And made dress after dress after purse after purse after dress after dress. And I was happy. And I was fine. Let me come on tell you, come on back and tell you some other shit about Dr. Barda that she put me up on with this suicidal shit, with the suicidal thoughts and suicidal ideations that continue to permeate my thinking, right? I, I still had a hard time working through that. So let me tell you how Dr. Barda made me get rid of that shit.